A lot of NATO nations are interested in increasing their maritime security in the north. For example, Canada, the US, Norway, Denmark, all of those countries have plans or already have polar class naval or coast guard vessels that they're going to operate in the north. The question we're asking is to what extent can existing warships like frigates and destroyers operate in some sort of limited ice conditions without any special polar class design. An ice breaking ship is a very heavy, very rugged, very powerful and very expensive and actually somewhat rare type of ship that's used to navigate in ice infested regions. Ice breaking vessels are very different than normal open water vessels. The efficient way to go through ice is to bend the ice down and break it off rather than to try to push it out of the way or crush it. Uh, so ice breaking ships are different structurally in that they have to be very robust and they're different in their shape in that they have to move ice out of the way instead of moving water out of the way. Our research is important because the Arctic environment is changing. Uh, climate change is, is causing less ice and there's much more interest in the Arctic for tourism, for commercial purposes, and for countries maintaining sovereignty. So there are not a lot of ice-class ships there are some, but ice-class ships are few compared to non-ice-class ships, and ice-class ships are extremely expensive. So with the Arctic quote-unquote opening up, there's a lot more interest in trying to understand how low ice-class ships and non-ice-class ships can function in the Arctic from an operational perspective. Here at Memorial University in, in Newfoundland, we're carrying out ice impact experiments, but we've been doing other work in, in other locations, for example, at the Technical University of Hamburg, where other ice crushing uh, experiments are being done against non-ice strengthened hulls. And, and eventually we'll knit all of those various experiments together and get a better understanding of how warships may operate in ice. You can't just apply the principles for ice class ships to low ice class ships or non ice class ships and expect the results to be as valid because for many different reasons the ships are a different shape and they've been optimized for a different purpose. In order to meet our research goals we have experiments done in the lab with the apparatus that you can see behind me and we have numerical models which we can use to simulate larger scenarios. So the experiments that we're doing in the lab are primarily geared to give us faith in our numerical models. While what we're doing behind us is full scale, we're operating on full scale ship structures, it's just a piece of a ship, it's not the full ship, so it can't give us the full picture. But what we can use this kind of research for is to validate numerical models of full ships in uh, scenarios that full ships would be subject to, to give us confidence in how the full ship would behave. So what our ultimate goal is, is to develop standards for NATO countries so that they can first of all assess their vessels and to see what sort of capability their warships have to operate in icy waters. But at the same time, in the long run, we hope to offer them advice in terms of how they could better design them in the first place. The idea is that we'll be able to have a, a greater presence in the north, for example, in the Arctic, and we won't be limited to just you know, deploying our polar class vessels from NATO navies and coast guards, but all of our fleet, or certainly a subset of it, may be able to operate uh, a little more freely in northern waters. Yeah.